Hello everyone, this video is a continuation on the behind the scene from pre-production which is making storyboard, uh, animating a story, uh, writing the story obviously. So right now is post-production, editing, adding sound effects, background music. Also on pre-production, uh, I didn't mention this but if you have your own voiceover, that is included in the pre-production. Post-production is like combining and adding all things together. So if my terms are wrong, correct me. If if it's different on film, this is just me trying to segregate or separate the two videos and all that stuff. So before we start this video, I want to address something. Stick nodes. If you use stick nodes, this tutorial at all doesn't apply. This video is the purpose is only to teach those who are using Pivot, obviously. So if you're here, just to leave a comment uh, that stick nodes is better because I only download stick nodes. I don't need to download video editing software, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, you're right. Obviously, it's better on some features such as tweening, zooming in, zooming out, adding sound effects, uh, adding text and all that stuff to the animation. Yeah, it, it wins, right, on those aspects. Uh, I'm not here to debate. I'm not here to say that Pivot is better than, than that. Everyone has their own opinion. You're free to do whatever you want, obviously. So. How do we export uh, animation from Pivot and all that stuff? What do we do? Which things are the right options and all that stuff? Uh, again, you can experiment as much as you want, but I'm just applying what I learned from school of animation, blah, 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 whatever, <laughs> on this. All right, so first things first, the aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is the most interesting thing. I'm hoping that you might understand this. Uh, in Dragon Ball Z, when it came, most TVs back then were square. So the aspect ratio is four by eight. Three. Now, everyone is watching uh, videos on their phone, which is usually a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now, there's a website where you can calculate change aspect ratio in 16 by 9. So, I typed in 720 here and see that the height can be 405. So, its aspect ratio is 16 by 9. So, if I go option 720, 405. There you go. When we export things now from animation, you go here, file, you click, I'm sorry did it so fast file and then export animation and then there's two option which is AVI and separate images gif is not an option gif is only for showcasing it online why is that because the color of gif is limited there's only 255 colors on gif I'm saying gif not gif because G stands for graphic not graphic why is it only AVI and separate images the, the options for exporting it as a video and editing it and also why do we choose AVI instead of separate images it depends on what or or where you're presenting your film right if let's say you're presenting your film in a film festival in a very big wide screen then choose separate images because when you're exporting separate images let's just show here the options if you're exporting a separate images you have this four options and one of the best option here is PNG you, as you can see it says there, um, if you put your mouse there, portable network graphic, okay, lossless, it's lossless. So lossless, meaning that it has the best quality um, out there. Here, lossy means it's, it's compressed, it's a little bit compressed. Um, and also, it depends on what quality you're using for the compression on it. JPEG is made for websites. This is because when you're loading a really high resolution high quality image it will take a lot of time for the website to render it out that's why they made jpeg which is a low resolution low quality compressed image of you know whatever you're looking at in the internet and gif again as i mentioned as you can see lossy it has lesser color and it's movable meanwhile this is also lossless svg but not, there's not that much uh, program that supports SVG. So this is the only best option that you have when you're exporting separate images. Now, I will not make a tutorial about separate images because I know that most of my viewers are, you know, YouTuber and they're planning to upload their animation in YouTube and whatever. So we're going to choose AVI. When you export, I'm just going to show the option. When you export an AVI, let's just test. 
there's three options resize resize is obviously resizing the the images or you know the video itself if you want it to be bigger or smaller and all that stuff so you can make it bigger than it has to be or smaller than it has to be this changes the file size of your video but you can also do the resizing on the video editing software itself so that's also a thing so I usually just keep it 100 uh, if I want to I can make it bigger but I'm, I'm not sure you know what's the point of making it bigger if the quality is gonna be bad super sample is how pixelated you want your animation is going to be in terms of separation of colors I will show that in a second compress I keep it unchecked meaning the quality is as best as it can be so what does it look like the super sample one and super sample two i've had a picture uh well a print screen all of them but uh, let's just go here and join so i exported super sample one and super sample four right now as you can see every single frame the edges of the uh, stick figures blends very well as to what is behind them and what is in front of them or whatever so there you go meanwhile the Super sample one, it doesn't blend. It will look pixelated and that is fine as, a, an, as an art style or aesthetic style that you want. If you're animating pixelated stuff, maybe choose it or I don't know, whatever. But yeah, that is what it does. And here's a close up for comparison, right? So as you can imagine, if you have an AVI and you exported it and you're showing it in a theater, let's just say you're submitting an AVI uh, exported from Pivot Film and then you're you're showing it in a film festival, it'll look like this. And you don't want your film to look like this if you're, you know, showing it to a lot of people. Obviously it's it looks really bad. <laughs> so there you go. It will it will blow up in, you know, a very big screen on a very big wall. It looks like this. But if you're just showing it on a phone, it doesn't matter because it's really small. No one goes in and zoom in in every single frame. So there you go. That's an option, right? So we'll just close that. And we go to the video editing software. So which is a video, you know, which video editing software? Oh yeah, before that, I'm sorry, I forgot. You have to keep in mind which or what uh, frame rate per second or FPS did you use? Frame rate per second, frames per second, sorry. Did you use? So. We go to, you know, Super Sample 2, that's what I usually use, Super Sample 2, you open it, you import it, I don't know how you import it in your own video editing software, and which video editing software to use. Uh, I don't trust uh, Vegas Pro, because I sometimes put some default settings, well not default settings, my own settings on it, and sometimes it for forgets it, and sometimes it crashes on me, and I kinda hate it, I don't like it at all <laughs> that much, so. There you go, I'm trying to learn other video editing software. I'll put down every single video editing software that I've tried and I'll say if it's free or not free in the description. Uh, you can go ahead and try, you can go ahead and look for tutorials. This video is not about how to use Vegas Pro or anything like that. It's more over the general terms and things that you have to keep in mind whenever you're exporting and rendering stuff, all right? So, we click this, put this here, right? And then, it's in the video right now. This is the timeline, all right? Most of the video editing software has that. And then this is for audio. So where do I download sound effects? I download my sound effects from this website. Again, you can click the description, you know, link the description, all that stuff. So go ahead. Uh, so if I wanna download some sound effects from let's say Gotenks, just search Gotenks. And then it will show from which game that sound effect is or from that voice, all right? So Let's say I want to download this, I click here, and zip. I download the zip file, right? And now I have the zip file of his uh, voiceover or whatever. I click here, I open it, and then I just, let's say Super Saiyan, because that's what I used. Um, he's not really a kid, but I think in this game he's a kid, so let's just, you know, play along with that. And I'll click here. Because it's a zip file, I need to export it. So exporting it, I have to put it in my sound effect. You know, I'll just put it here for now. So I'll export it here. There's also another type of zip, which is a RAR file. R R A R. Yeah, RAR file. There you go. WinRAR the download. I'll put this again link in the description for downloading WinRAR files. So may I'm not sure if they all have zip files here. 
so this is you know winrar downloading it and you can open win well rar files so once you have the sound effect let's just say i have it here i will put it here um the highest quality file type that is uncompressed is wav wav files this is a wav file sometimes it's ogg sometimes it's mp3 and all that stuff they have different kind of quality and you can tell if it's higher quality or not by looking at the file type if you go and properties you can tell if it's really good the quality sound effects if it, it doesn't sound like from a radio or something by looking at the bitrate and also where is it uh, the size also uh, because it's different for every single um, thing we put now the sound effect here oh yeah wait, we already did so we now put that here whatever and then we play the video let me just make this a little bit you know lesser because i think it will be really loud so there you go you, you have your sound effect i don't know <laughs> Well, voiceover, not a sound effect. Um, for sound effect, again, you can download. That's a voice line there, but you can also download sound effect if you want. So there you go, Dragon Ball here. So you can have ambience, sound effects. As you can see, uh, it's for the specific character or whatever. But yeah, there's Dragon Ball Z sound effects here. All right, this is not just voiceover. They just have it here also. So it's the same procedure i think it's the same for every single video editing software out there you can gra grab the, the sound effect and just put it in the timeline also you can go ahead and go frame by frame by left and right uh, arrow keys but yeah go ahead and watch video tutorials about video editing software <laughs> so yeah and then also if you want to convert sound effects or sound files uh, you can go ahead and look it up in the internet I'm not here to present every single solution out of nowhere, but yeah, uh, for me, <laughs> I still present my solution. I use Audacity for converting stuff, so that's my option for you, and if you have different options, then go ahead. If you know how to do stuff by yourself, go ahead, right? <sighs> All right. Uh, <laughs> it's the same for sound effects, it's the same for background music. You can just drag and click them here. Um, one thing, though. If you see something on the screen, let's say an explosion, uh, this is more of a realism kind of thing, right? To make things interesting for your video. So when an explosion happened in a really f far away from the camera, if it's really far away from the camera, you can then put the sound effect after a few seconds because light travel faster than sound. This is the same phenomenon when you, you see the lightning before you hear the thunder. So it's the same thing as that. So that's just a few minor details that you have to keep in mind when you're putting sounds and all that stuff so yeah now when you're rendering oh render as he is so when you're rendering stuff this is where it's a little bit confusing because i have a def well i have i made my own settings here but it's no longer there for some apparent reason and this is why i don't I like sony vegas pro because it changes things by itself and also it crashes a lot of times so right now i'll just use wmv because it's the only thing that has the option to change the fps for now uh it, it should be avi because you're using avi video but you know i'm here to present to you why things happen this way and things that you had to consider when you're rendering stuff so look at your fps here it's 17.5 and when you're looking at your fps when you're rendering it's 24 fps so if we customize the template and we go to video and then you know change the fps there's no option for it let's see can i type it in 17 oh yeah i can type it in so yeah you can type in your frame rate so let's just try that for now i think we're good to go we can, we can export this now oh, it's 7.5 <laughs> we will we'll learn i guess uh video smoothness 100 and export and then render so now you have that the few main issue about this is that if your pivot file doesn't have the same frame rate what happens you know if you have the 17.5 you export it as 24p then what happens right this usually what happens when you do that as you can see if I go frame by frame here you can see frames like this 
that wasn't there when we're animating this that isn't in pivot this is when we're exporting it and rendering it in Sony Vegas and this is not because it's Sony Vegas fault um, it's because we didn't know things back then now I know better so obviously if if I'm not wrong I've solved it here it'll play it'll have the same timing as the pivot and it doesn't have those you know interpolating fading frames as you can see which is really good hey okay, for me well for me I guess but yeah there you go uh, I hope you learn something from this video I hope you understand better uh, about video quality or you know editing value whatever that is <laughs> on the on the quality of the video that's what I'm saying about so yeah Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.